So we're going to do a, a quick mock playthrough of uh, this game, Cartooner. Um, there's four rounds, um, and each round gets progressively harder. Uh, more trends are added uh, and things like that. Um, also, each round will uh, have the artist draw more panels. Uh, before the game's started, everyone needs to decide uh, what level of difficulty uh, they want the game to be at, and that's defined by how long each player has to draw what they're supposed to draw. Um, so, at the beginning, round one, everybody draws three theme cards. And here I got Artificial Intelligence, The Last Person on Earth, and therapists. And I'm going to score points or fame, which you see this is one fame point, two fame points. You get more fame points uh, if you meet certain criteria. Um, the first criteria is uh, that your themes or your obsessions are depicted in the frames that are given. So within two frames, I need to show artificial intelligence, the last person on earth, and therapists. And uh, so I can get a maximum of three fame points for that. Um, secondly, the second rule for fame is uh, each panel needs to have something drawn in it. Um, you get two fame for um, having each panel full. If you don't fill each panel or that there's not something coherent in there, you don't get any fame for the, those uh, for that criteria at all. Um, so like if I just scribbled in here, that wouldn't count. Um, the third rule for fame points is no more than three word balloons for each round. Um, so I could have a total of three speech bubbles, three word balloons in each cartoon. So on round one, where that's two panels, that might be easy to meet. However, as it gets progressively harder, you have to use less and less uh, dialogues. So even on round four, when you have to fill eight panels, you can only use three speech bubbles. Um, things like sound effects, onomatopoeia, boom, pow, whack, those don't count towards your, uh, uh, your speech um, bubble. Um, neat symbols, you can use as many symbols as you want as well, and things like that. And so basically, the first round, we have a set amount of time. Um, five minutes is apparently the uh, shortest that they recommend you go, and that is the hardest, and they recommend you start at eight minutes. Um, but if you're finding it difficult, but you're still enjoying the game, feel free to play with that, that time um, uh, in general. So the first thing I have to do is I have to come up with a title for the cartoon I'm going to do. And if it's going to be about artificial intelligence, the last person on earth, and therapists, why don't I do, why don't I call it the last robot therapist. And for my pen names, I'll call myself Big... Papa A. And I don't know how much fame I've gotten for this round yet because it hasn't been scored. And so somebody calls uh, time started and we have so much time to start drawing our cartoon. So in round one, what am I going to do? Uh, why don't I uh, quickly, I'll draw like a, uh, a therapist couch here and um, I'm going to draw kind of a robot sitting on it. And then I would say time. <laughs> and uh, so after this, uh, the, you know, we could act our scene out, uh, try to show that we've met the requirements. Did I, uh, uh, did I include artificial intelligence? Yeah. Did I include the last person on Earth? Yeah, uh, the robot just said he killed all the other humans, so this therapist is the only one remaining. 
And therapists, yep, there's a therapist right there. And uh, he's uh, his only client that he'll ever have again is an artificial intelligence robot. So uh, after round one, I now have three fame points. Two, three. And we would go to round two. Round two, more difficult. Not only do I have to draw four panels in the same amount of time, but now we start to add trend cards. Um, so what happens is the person with the least amount of fame would draw two trend cards and then pick one. What the trends do is give you more criteria to meet in order to try and earn more bonus fame points. So here we'd have our choice between a medical trend or a language police. And these are supposed to represent the uh, uh, mimetic popular things that are going on in culture at the time. Um, so let's uh, choose medical. Um, so if I can include a medical theme, like doctors, clinics, or whatever, um, I get an extra two fame. Um, you can gain an extra five fame for naming the largest number of unique parts of the human body. Um, body parts must be real or they don't count. Um, so, uh, if... I uh, include a doctor or a clinic or something, I get two points, and then I have a chance of getting five bonus, more bonus points if between all of the players, I am the one who named the most, um, uh, most unique parts of the human body. And by that means I can't say I, 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 and have that be four eyes. Uh, no, uh, I would only count uh, once. And it's also important to point out here that uh, naming things in this game doesn't mean doesn't uh, mean that it has to be written out. You can also uh, show that you're um, uh, a body part by drawing it. Um, so now with this theme on the board and four more um, panels to fill, uh, I'd have to draw, again, artificial intelligence, the last person on Earth, therapists, and see if I can squeeze in a clinic or something medical as well as start to, starting to name body parts. So somebody would say time, and I think I'm, uh, I'm going to start going on with the... Um, uh, I'm going to build... I'm going to use this as the beginning. The first one is the beginning of my narrative. I am going to... Uh, I'm gonna have this this uh, robot and therapist uh, go on for the be the rest of my story. All right, and then I would uh, be done. So here I drew the therapist, Just realizing he's the last person on Earth, the robot trying to uh, console him, and uh, you have me forever. Um, so we would then uh, score this again too. So to my three, I would uh, did I get artificial intelligence, the last person on Earth, and therapists in there? Yep, that's that's uh, three more. Three more points. Um, and did I meet any of the, the trends? Uh, not really. I mean, a psychiatrist is a doctor, so that loans itself to it. So I'd say I got two points for that. But I didn't really pay attention or focus on listing body parts. So if uh, my opponent did that, definitely. <laughs> they definitely have five points if they mentioned more than eyes. I would then also argue that, well, look, I got individual fingers and hands and arms, you know, but if, if someone started to, to get really uh, graphic, <laughs> then maybe uh, maybe they would have, maybe they'd have more points than me at this point. And uh, the game then goes on to round three. Round three, um, instead of one trend card, somebody would draw three trend cards and pick two, maybe memes and military. Um, and then they would have 
six panels to fill. And they would still have to uh, have their three themes, their obsessions, and they would have uh, more opportunity to earn bonus points. And then last but not least is round four, a whopping eight panels. Someone would have to draw in five to eight minutes and four trend cards would be chosen and three picked out of that. So in this case, uh, funny animals, gadgets, and a uh, happy ending. And um, after round four, the game ends and whoever has the most fame is the best cartooner. Uh, this uh, this game is fun. It's uh, kind of like a Pictionary with uh, guided stories. Um, uh, I enjoy it. Uh, it's most fun played with other people who enjoy it. Not everyone likes to uh, draw. Not everyone thinks they're good at drawing. Um, but this game reminds me a lot of what comic illustrators and illustrators in general uh, might do as an exercise, which is a five-minute comic. They give themselves a uh, short period of time with which to complete uh, a narrative and um, try to bang it out and make it clear and see what other if other people can understand what's going on in it. Um, so I would definitely consider this game if you like drawing comics or uh, anime or manga or doodling in general um, and, and you think that this is up your alley. Also, if you've been playing Pictionary for far too long and want a little bit of a, of a twist on um, something that feels very similar, I would definitely recommend Cartooner. Um, however, if uh, people in your playgroup or that you like to play games with uh, are nervous about drawing, uh, don't like to draw, this might not be uh, a very good game for them. Uh, so Cartooner, uh, great game, get doodling, and um, everybody walks out with their own four-page comic at the end of it anyways. So uh, uh, definitely great fun, and it's always good to have a game where you you get a souvenir uh, that you keep with. So uh, that is how you play Cartooner.